And that was a question that I always recently been asking myself. What was the origin point of the degenerate world that the internet we know of today? Now, of course, the device you're using, the computer, is not the first iteration of this device. Way back in the day, they used to have computers that process stuff through vacuum tubes and old school technology. Back in the day, the internet took like minutes Maybe hours to fire up a certain web page, depending on how, you know, bloated it was. Nowadays, accessing a web page can be done entirely wirelessly over 5G communications. You can watch 4K video through wireless cellular technology. Crazy world we live in. But again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take you back to a time where some of you all watching weren't even born. We're talking about the early 90s. Now, of course, the first website in the world actually still exists. This is info.cern.ch, home of the actual very first website ever made. And here you can browse the first website, which obviously, if you're looking at it, appears to just basically be very basic HTML. In fact, if you start viewing the page source, it is in fact very, very basic. This is the first website ever made. It wasn't meant to share video. It wasn't meant to play Flash games on. It wasn't meant to do anything wacky, but it was the first resource of information human beings commercially used. Now, of course, I want to start off by looking into the old school website. And obviously, if somebody has done like deep web browsing and things like that, this isn't exciting, okay? Whipping this up on Chrome doesn't really get my rocks off, okay? So today we're going to go even back in time and open up a time capsule that allows us to use the internet of old, the computer systems of old, and basically experience the website as initially people back in the day saw it. So today's going to be a little goofy, relaxing video, but let's get diving right in to the very first website in its original pristine chef's kiss way. So first things first, when you actually look at the website resource over here, you can see that what's out here. Let's see what they've got over here by subject. And of course, you can see that the first website covers things like aeronautics, astronomy and astrophysics, biosciences, computing, geography, law, libraries, literature, humanity, math. It's an educational website, okay? You weren't downloading ROMs or anything. You want to read the Bible right over here, ladies and gentlemen. You can whip out the old King James Bible which takes at least a decade to load for some reason. I'm trying to figure out why that's the case. And of course, some of these sites have been updated a little bit. For instance, the law website leads to law.cornell.edu. And of course, they're even like, bro, we don't know what user to www text leetable.html is, bro. We, we live in the year 2024. <laughs> Now, what's interesting over here is www text. And the reason why it's important is, of course, one thing you have to understand is website code, typically HTML, is also backwards compatible. So a lot of sites that you think might not work in old school browsers probably do, provided they're not using a lot of new technologies that render them inoperable. For instance, accessing Google on old school browsers like Netscape, for instance, appear to still reasonably work. That doesn't mean you can do much with them, but you can access web Google and certain websites on old school browsers because there is a compatible code base. So here's an entire roadmap of the original browsers, ladies and gentlemen. So we're probably sitting somewhere, uh, you know, if we have to look at the timeline in the year 2024, there's a few browsers we know that exist, but all the way back in the year 1990, well, not 1990, but just shortly before, you know, the end, of the, the beginning of 91 and the end of 1990 was actually the World Wide Web or Nexus and also the line mode browser, which is libwww. I know that it's hard to see, but I'm going to show you a more like a, you know, a visual component of it right now. So for instance, if you want to browse that same website under the line mode browser, which was like the second browser ever made, this is what it basically looked like, looked like, okay? You know those old school computer monochrome terminals you find in like Fallout or like old movies or like TV shows? This is basically it. So for instance, if we actually go and type in back and you, they even have like text edited too on it, you can go like back. Wait, why can't we just wait? Uh, let, let's, let's actually, oh my God, this whole site, this site kind of sucks. So here's the original website here. World Wide Web is a wide area hypermedia information retrieval initiative. <laughs> this is how people used to browse the chans, bro. And of course, what you can see over here is they list, they link actual browsers like Align Mode, X11 Viola, Next Step, which is actually an operating system we'll look into a little bit. 
But of course, one of the things that the way that they browsed is, you see how they have like little bracketed numbers? So what you would basically do is if you wanted to read like subjects, for instance, you would type in eight, hit enter, and boom, you would get information via subject. And of course, if you wanted to like, I don't know, learn something about like, for instance, uh, biosciences. I'm not, a, I'm not a bioscience expert, but let's type in six, head on over there. Whoa, baby and ladies and gentlemen, you've got like a database. It seems like some of the websites have updated so much that you actually can't access a whole chunk of them. But you know, whatever, we can, we can keep seeing more, okay? We can keep like, we can hit enter for more and we get other stuff like mathematics, okay? Well, that's in French, I'm not gonna go there. Let's go look, let's look at song lyrics, dude. The original genius? Apparently disabled for copyright reasons. Man, there's not a whole lot of fun here. Get out of here. Physics, high energy physics. Let's go, dude, I'm pretty high energy today. Boom. What is that? Information from CERN, DESI, Fermilab, into P3, KVI. Uh, we're gonna stick with the first one because we know CERN. And of course, this loops back to the first website. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, was an emulation. And emulation is cool and all, but I wanna show you kind of a similar version. Now, this is a terminal. Now, if you're a Linux user, if you're a Mac user, you probably know the terminal. If you're a Windows user, you probably know it as something known as the command prompt PowerShell. Uh, or I guess the Windows Terminal or whatever the hell they want to call it these days. I'm going to fire up links like the good Lord wanted. And of course, this is the best way to browse the internet. If it's not this way, it's literally Telnet, okay? That's how a man browses the internet, okay? That's how, that's how fucking men browse the web, okay? Not this, not this beta stuff with Chromium and Firefox and and all the other browsers that exist. So we're gonna type G for go, and if you wanna open the URL, what you wanna do is you wanna go info.cern.ch. And this is how you browse the original website as God intended. So you can actually go and browse the first, in fact, you can load up the line mode browser inside here right now. That I think this might actually break the system, to be honest, if I loaded up that line mode. Oh my God. It actually, oh yeah, it works because it's just literally an animation with HTML anyways. But we're gonna go, we're gonna go back. All right, so uh, let's do control. Uh, can we go back? Yeah, we can go back to info -serm. So obviously this is the first type of browser. And if you go browse the first website, you might be like, whoa, this doesn't look crazy exciting. Remember, this is before a time when GUIs were like this big thing, okay? This is a time period where the way we browse the internet or the way we operated computers was primarily through command lines, okay? It wasn't It wasn't until like a couple years later that companies like, you know, uh, Xerox, like companies like uh, OS slash two, I believe, or that was the product, Microsoft, Apple, a lot of the big companies we know today that make the mainstream operating systems actually developed the first versions of Windows 1.0 or MS-DOS or whatever. So for instance, if you go to subjects real quick, you can actually browse a lot of these areas. So for instance, if you wanna see like the US weather, for instance, it says unable to access document. But if we go to like law, for instance, which it wasn't able to calculate before, we're actually connecting to the Cornell Education website. And this is what it looks like if you take away everything, all the images, the fancy jargon, and browse it as an old school like website. Now, if you actually like want to check, you can go to like YouTube, for instance, too. So for instance, if you go to www.google.com, for instance, right? You can basically go to Google as it is, and the website, again, you have to basically allow a whole bunch of cookies and whatnot, but here's Google as it is. So if I type in Mudahar, for instance, you can see that Google searching myself, you can literally see what Google would look like if it literally was just text-based. And you mean, you can go to YouTube as well too. So if you go to youtube.com, and obviously you can understand that YouTube probably isn't going to work because it's text-based, okay? That's just not how it works. Uh, there's no video or image to view. <laughs> Now, to understand, there's a lot of passion about the origins of the internet, and it's not just from CERN, it's about people who wanna keep this stuff alive, so newer generations can at least appreciate where, like, everything began. And obviously, if you know a little bit about the history of the internet, you'd know the first version of it was ARPANET, Everything we use on the internet was basically a product of the United States military anyways, their communication system. So you can actually read it from livinginternet.com where they said ARPANET was the first wide area packet switching network, the Eve network of what has evolved into the internet we know and love today. So it says here the UCLA team, which I believe is the University of California, Los Angeles, installed the IMP and created the first ARPANET node. 
And of course, if you look over here, Wingfield built the hardware interface between the UCLA computer and the IMP. The machines were connected, and within a couple of days of delivery, the IMP was communicating with the local NMC host, an SDS Sigma 7 computer, which by the way, that I believe it's that right there, ran the SEX operating system. <laughs> I feel, I feel like they intentionally made it so that well, that would be the acronym. Get the fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> so basically the first network, the first actual connection was next. And effectively what would happen is at the Stanford Research Institute, they ran an SDS 940 with the Genie operating system and connected to another IMP. And of course the connection was established over a 50 kilobyte per second line provided by the AT&T telephone company. As is often the case, the first test didn't work flawlessly, as you can imagine. I'm more interested in what the hell the Genie operating system was. I actually wanna see what the hell that looked like. But of course, one of those Sigma computers that you actually saw looked a lot like this. And again, if you're wondering, whoa, Muda, can you explain how this works? Dude, I, dude, I, Trust me, give me, a, give me a few days and I'll probably end up figuring out. But this was, as you can imagine, way before my time, okay? Way before a lot of people I know's time. The only people that I know that are using this are actually very, very retired. And in some cases are very, very dead. But again, according to Library Learning, an educational guide, the internet started in the 60s for government researchers to share info. Because back in the 60s, before the internet, the only way to share information between computer to computer was literally through like actually magnetic tapes. So you had to actually print your information to a tape, post that over to the other person in, in the world, snail mail it to them, and they would then ingest and install all that information and see what was going back and forth. Thank God the internet allowed all of us to communicate in basically real time, okay? I could send something over to Bob without having to involve the United States Postal Services, Jesus. January 1st, 1983 is considered the official birthday of the internet. Prior to this, the various computer networks did not have a standard way to communicate with each other. The new communication protocol was established under TCP IP, which is the standard that we use today. The above is a scale model of the Univac 1. That's a scale model, by the way. You see how they look like cabinets and shit? This, this was like, this, this was a computer back in the day, okay, that was performing a thousand calculations per second, weighed 16,000 pounds, and used 5,000 vacuum tubes. Christ almighty, dude, what a long way that we've come. Could you imagine back in time, like, when they discovered this, telling them that a goddamn iPhone <laughs> would have more processing power <laughs> than every computer in the goddamn state combined? That is insane. That's wild. It's crazy to think of it that way. So according to W3.org, the first web browser was called World Wide Web, as after all, it was written in 1990, and it was the only way to see the web. Much later, it was renamed Nexus in order to save confusion between the program and the abstract information space. So again, one of the things that they have is a screenshot of the browser. And if you look at a screenshot, that's exactly how it looked. So it kind of resembles modern internet browsers of today. And of course, one of the things that I have over here is an installation of the next, uh, br the next Step browser. So while this isn't necessarily perfect, I'm going to install the actual web browser in this, another web browser, not this one in particular, and show you how the internet works probably through B-roll because it does take a while to install this specific version of the operating system. But don't let the actual buckos at CERN prevent you. They actually rebuilt the original browser for everyone to use. You can use it within a modern browser. It's a wild world indeed. It's literally right here, 2019, they rebuilt this. This is how much they care about showing people how the internet began. And of course, if you look at the actual browser over here, this kind of looks like when I did deep web browsing with like the hidden wiki, like the whole like gateway to like random parts. So you can see how they have like, you know, things like the CERN information. They've got a yellow pages functionality, which you obviously can't go to. They've got internet news and the internet news groups. They look like 4chan boards, dude. Alt, Bionet, Bit, Biz. Let's look at the, I guess commercially uh, oriented. And of course you can see that they're looking at America. This is just like business oriented, but posting about stolen merchandise. <laughs> Look at the online lost and found it. Oh wait, it's not found on the server. God damn it. I guess we'll read science, dude. I mean, 
Let's go. I mean, this is OG Reddit, basically, if you kind of think about it, dude. Science energy. Let's, oh, it's not founded? Christ. Of course, a lot of things just don't exist because these news groups have been taken down. They existed at one point, but obviously servers eventually die out. I, I doubt that anybody was browsing this kind of stuff, you know, b besides me just jumping onto it for the, for the sake of history. Now, if you wanted to browse pages, you would go to document, open from full document references. And basically in this situation, you would download things, you would put in like URLs like Google and like hit open. But of course, this just doesn't seem to have any connection to like new age uh, servers and whatnot. So again, it is, ladies and gentlemen, as you can imagine, a pretty dead media. It's fun to look at in history's sake, but yeah, this is the internet of old, man. Wild shit. So I don't know why this topic has been in my head. I have this weird thing where like once something gets jammed in, I pretty much have to make a video about it just so it can leave my head. It's like a song that gets stuck in, you know, into your head for a little while. You know, you go, dun, 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 dun. Like I got the GTA 6 trailer still stuck in my head for crying out loud. Uh, this is like this topic stuck into my head. Me personally, I didn't know that this was the first internet website until like I would say a week ago, which is wild for my channel because I've made so much content on internet stuff, the deep web, that I should probably have taken time to look at the origin point of basically what connected all of us in this community together. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Some Ordinary Gamers community is pretty goddamn old at this point, okay? And you know what? It's always good to sit back, relax, and basically, in a way, make a nostalgic web browsing video in 2024 for crying out loud. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like it if you dislike it. This is me, Mudahar, and yeah, it was a fun time to look at how the internet of old acted. If you feel old like me, <laughs> but if you're young and you appreciate the fact that you get to browse normally like a, like a normal person, you know, with ease and tons of use, on the internet, then, you know, congratulations. You get to experience a web that was built by old bones. And old bones they are. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.